Hi, good afternoon. This is Mike Dower with Real Green Systems. Today we're going to be talking about updating your old cancels, past estimates, and marketing data in service assistant. One of the most important things that you can do before you do any type of marketing campaign. Um, just a little background on myself. I've been with uh, Real Green Systems now going on 12 years, supplying uh, data and direct mail services for our customers here at the Real Green. Um, I've been in the, in the data business since 1987, providing um, service industry with data for residential and commercial uh, prospects. And um, we uh, have implemented many different techniques inside Service Assistant to be able to let you use your data as effectively as possible and to be able to do, to do an update, which is put the correct name and phone number if you want a phone number at the address that you have uh, in service assistant. Um, these could be old cancels, they could be past estimates, and any marketing data that you may have. Uh, it's amazing, but only about 20% of owners, business owners and marketing people understand that it's so important to update your name on the list, on the residential uh, listings that you're doing before you do your marketing. And um, I've seen in the past, people have anywhere from 30 to 60% of the names are incorrect and they're still trying to use that list for marketing and they wonder why they don't get a good return. The data that you have in your system right now and that you've been compiling in your system for years and years since you've been in business, is the best data that you could get. Um, we provide data on a daily basis to customers and can't provide as good a data as you already have in your system right now. So we're gonna be talking about why you need to do the update and, and because it's going to make you more successful when you do your marketing campaign. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna see what do we have inside Service Assistant. So we're gonna go up to our Reports tab, Customer List, and go all the way down to Marketing Summary Report. This is gonna allow us to take a look and see how much data do I have in Service Assistant right now. And the Marketing Summary Report, this is the last page. In some cases, you'll have five to possibly 50 pages of Marketing Summary Report because it's actually gonna give you by zip code um, from the first page to the last page, by zip code where you have the most active customers in that particular zip code. So as you move through the marketing summary report, you've got your zip code, you've got marketing data here, you've got measured, not measured. So if you only wanna update the measured listings, you can. You've got your no statuses, which not sure what that would be in your system. Uh, everybody treats no statuses differently. Then you've got your estimates, printed estimates, uh, given estimates, call customer, estimates not sold. You've got your cancel, do not call, cancel, call next year, cancel moved. You've got always active, and then you have your active statuses here. So your marketing summary report is gonna give you all the information that you need to see what do I have available here and what really needs to be updated. Um, and obviously when you're looking at this, uh, anytime you can give one of us a call here at uh, Real Green, myself or Danielle, and we'll be glad to go over this with you and kind of explain a little bit better in detail and take a look at what you have. Um, so many customers that have been around for quite some time, again, aren't utilizing the data that they already have. So they're not doing an update, or they're doing something that they've been doing for years and years, or uh, one of the big things is uh, adding or current resident to your list. So when you're sending out an envelope, you put an or current resident on it, what's the chances of that getting opened? It's very, very slim, okay? Just look at yourself. When you get something at home that was sent to the person that owned your home before you, unless it was a brand new home, um, you're not gonna open that. And also, how are you gonna think of the company that sends you something with an old name on it and or current resident? Are you really gonna be inclined to call that company? So it's very, very important 
that you get your data updated. So you don't want or current resident on there. There are some reasons for or current resident on things and some not, and uh, we can go through some of that information uh, as well in uh, some other presentation. So, okay, so you're gonna go in, you did your marketing summer report, and now you're gonna go back into reports, customer list, customer list, okay? And you're gonna have your customer list screen pop up. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna decide, do I wanna update all of my zip codes? Uh, do I wanna update all of my sources as well? Go through here and see, okay, I wanna do marketing, I wanna do my estimates, estimate given, I wanna do cancel. Oh, and I wanna do cancel, do not call, because you know what? If somebody moves into that address and I have them as cancel, do not call, because either they were a bad debt or maybe you know, there's those customers that we just don't want to deal with. They're 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 too too tough. And somebody else moves into that property. You want to send them an offer letter, you know, next year to um, call call you about using your service because you've got the lawn measured. You've got the information inside service assistant to give them an actual quote either in your direct mail piece or obviously over the phone. So cancel do not calls. You also want to look at updating those. Um, so you go through here and you basically look at what do, what do I want to do? What's my budget for marketing? Do I want to update everything? We've got customers that have hundreds of thousands of data in their system, and they've got a budget to maybe mail 100,000 letters. So they're going to update the ones that they're going to market to, and they're going to spend their money a little bit wisely in another area. So it all depends how much you have as to how much you're going to update. Uh, updating the data is about six and a half cents per record. That's with uh, name and phone. Um, if you want phone, we can give you phone numbers as well. Um, if not, we can just update the names. So, and you only pay for what's updated. Uh, a lot of times I see customers, well, we'll, up, we'll update every two years. Why would you do that when 15 to 18% of the people move every year? Uh, if you're updating every two years, that means you're wasting money sending out your mail to the old owner. And because you only pay for what's updated, why not do it every single year and make sure that your data is the best possible before you spend money on printing postage and mailing services. So you wanna make sure, again, that uh, you do your update. So going in here, updating the data through service assistant, again, you'll select off the particular ones that you want, obviously not active. We never update any actives um, in here. Do I want to update just the ones with square footage and so forth? So, you know, is it uh, there is a company branch, I've got three branches and I only want to do two or something. What your routes, you can do by zip code. Um, so you go in here and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go through here and you're just going to want to preview this. So you're going to preview this information to see exactly how much data I have to do in my update. Your marketing summary report is going to give you that number, but you still have to go back through here, select your zip code, select square footages, and so forth. And we can obviously help you do that um, when you get to that point. So you're going to go through and you're going to do that. And then you're going to have a number on the last page of that preview and it's going to come up with hey this is 29,753 records that we want to update and you're going to take a look at this and say yeah this is correct uh, that's the numbers that came out of my uh, marketing summary report it's very close to that and this is what I want to update so you'd back out of this and then you would go over here and click create list file so in your um, customer list customer list screen after you have everything else marked you check off create list file. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create the actual file that we use to do the update. And it's gonna put it inside, in, inside uh, the list folder in service assistant. So you don't have to do an export. You don't have to send uh, all kinds of information and stuff to us. The basic list is customer number, name, address, city, state, zip, and phone number. The basic information, because we don't need any of the other information, square footage, all that other stuff that's inside service assistant. We're just looking for the basic. And this creating the list file will allow us to do this. Um, some customers use this process too to uh, do their mailings with when they don't have pricing and stuff uh, too. So there's various reasons. But, but
but we use it for the file update. So create list file. Then what you're going to do, um, and again, we can we can help you walk you through this. Uh, myself or one of the techs can walk you through the process. But we're going to go in here and we're going to actually find this in Service Assistant. In your, if it's on your C drive, it's on your server. If you're a hosted, um, we would actually go out to the hosted uh, server to get the information. But we're going to go through. We're going to go to the Service Assistant folder, and then within there, there's going to be a list folder an LIST list folder. Um, and that within that folder, that's where the CSV file is going to be. It's going to have today's date and today's time on it. When you actually press the create list file and hit preview, it will actually create that inside the list folder there. So that's where you would find that. Um, depending upon how large the file is, you may want to zip the file. Um, you know, if it's four or five megs or 10 megs, you can zip it before you send it over to us. And then that would be the file that we would actually take and do the update with. So now you would send that over to us. We would send you a proposal, give you an idea of what the actual cost is going to be. Now remember that we only charge you for what is being updated. So we would ask you how long it's been since you last updated your list. We would look at, hey, is it 20% updating? Are we going to update 40% of it? Again, depending upon the age of the list. And then we would provide you that particular uh, proposal before we do anything for you so that you'll know about how much this is going to cost. So um, if you're looking to have us actually do the phone numbers, we do require your SANS number, your subscription identification number, from the FTC, which is the federal do not call in order to give you phones. So we can walk you through that process if you're unfamiliar with it. That particular thing is free to um, register with the uh, do not call. We have um, an email that we can send you that shows you how to do that as well. So once the file is updated, which takes um, two to three days on our end, once we get the file from you and your signed proposal back, then we go ahead and do the process and we get it back and we'll send that back to you with a report that will show you how many names were updated, how many phones were updated and so forth so you know what your total is. And that file comes back to you in a CSV file and then we can, we can help you do the import, we can have a technician do it, but there are tools within Service Assistant under your utilities and customer utilities and you're going to do your uh, import corrected customer information. So. That's going to allow you to put the file back in. We're going to add a flag code of updated name and updated phone so that on that record, you can see in Service Assistant when you pull that up, or you can do a report that shows you how many of these were updated. So, for instance, you can also go in and run your customer list, customer list report. If you update your um, up, uh, cancel do not calls, and you see that we updated a high percentage of those because you've had them in your system for years and years, you could then take, you could, you could look at the flag code, look at the uh, status code, and then change them to uh, status code cancel call next year. That way you can market to them because, hey, they're, they were a cancel customer. You have the square footage information of their property size, and you can send them a proposal with a price and um, hopefully get uh, those to sign up for your services. So this is what the file looks like. It's got customer number, street address, city, state, zip. Um, you've got phone, first name, last name, and then also on the file that goes back in, there's there's uh, Y's in the updated name, updated phone column, and so forth. So um, if you ever need to go back to the one that you sent us, again, it's the same thing. You could go back and look for some reason for uh, uh, getting a phone number back or some something like that. Um, and again, we can go over that stuff. So now once the file goes back into your system um, and you're uh, looking at that, those particular records, you can go to the change log, which is on the main customer screen, and you can see based on the change log, hey, when did this change? This was this name and somebody came in. Did the employee actually change this from Smith to, from Jameson to Smith? or in the change log, it would also have your flag code that was up, be updated by 
uh, the process that we do on a yearly basis for you to see the update and you could still see the old name there. So that information is in your change log. So if you ever need to go back and, and, and pick it out, you have that ability to. So um, also backfilling uh, the data. We also do a, a process that's, that is backfilling your data. This is a marketing summary report, again, uh, from the beginning that we looked at. So it shows you, this is the first page. Here's the zip code, the city name. Here's how many in a marketing status. Here's how many are measured, not measured. Here's our estimate status and how they go through there. Here's your uh, do not calls and then your actives right here. So what we would do is let's say that you'd have your top four zip codes and you'd have a lot of data in here, but you wanna backfill, you wanna add more data to your system we can go in and actually through the same type of process, pull what we call a suppression file and take that suppression file, load it into our national database, and then give you the records that you don't currently have there, um, those single family dwellings, uh, possibly by square footage and stuff. And there's another um, webinar that we do about talking about square footage uh, that's on the site there. But we can backfill in uh, your data as well. So, okay. Um, I want to talk just a minute about updating the file and the CAS postal uh, post office mailing uh, update. Okay. When we update your file, we are updating the name and the phone number at that address. Okay. So we are updating just the name and phone. We're not validating the actual actual address that it's a mailable address based on postal standards. Um, in the past, I've seen where people have actually typed addresses in, gone up and down the streets, and some of them don't have directionals right, or they don't have the uh, north, it's North Main Street, not Main Street North, and so forth. Some of those issues could affect your updating because we use the actual street, house number, and last name in our update process. Um, but that's our file update. It is updating the name and the phone number at that location. The CAS, the postal processing, is actually validating the address, that it's a mailable standardized address to the post office um, specifics, okay? So if you're gonna be doing a mailing in-house and you want us to actually do the postal CAS processing to make sure they're a deliverable valid address, we can do that as well. That's another process. That's not, that's not a standard file update. That's a CAS address standardization, okay? So when you're doing your mailings with us, we actually do the CAS uh, certification on every job that we do here at Real Green uh, before the job is actually gets mailed, okay? So that's done here internally every time that you would upload a database to us for mailing. All that is part of our, our process. So some people just don't really know the difference between a file update and the CAS certification. So I just wanted to really give everybody uh, a little, little update on that as far as what's what. Those are two different processes. So, um, so hopefully if you've watched this um, video and uh, this presentation, you know how important it is to make sure that your data is updated before your next marketing uh, uh, time. So updating your data in November, December for your spring mailer and stuff is a great opportunity, great time to do that. Not a lot of people are moving around the holiday season in the first of the year, depending upon the area that you're in, but you want to get that updated. So you, you set yourself up to win with your uh, direct mail and any of in your, your phone, your calling and so forth. So make sure that you do that. Um, you can contact myself or Danielle um, here at uh, Real Green Systems. You can email us, you can call us, and we will be glad to go through the process with you um, and give you more information about it. But please make sure you update your, your data. Again, as I said before, really 20% of the people know how important it is to get your data updated. And it's the least expensive part of your marketing campaign but it's one of the most things that are overlooked by owners, by managers, and by marketing people out there. Good data produces good results for your marketing campaign. 
Um, thanks for thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to call us.